Two months into the NHL season, and folks, I have watched a lot of hockey. But today, we are going to be ranking every single NHL team's watchability. From best all the way down to the worst. But where does your favorite NHL team rank in the watchability rankings? Well, make sure you watch till the end for every single team ranked. And hit that subscribe button if you're new for more hockey content just like this all year round. Now, folks, I have devised the most scientific tier list yet. Today, we're going to be going through every single team to see which tier they end up placing in. And we got a few here. Six, in fact. And they go from must-watch TV, wildly entertaining, to in whenever i can enjoyable hockey won't be my priority and last but not least subway surfer split screen basically if i have to watch your team like this split screen you'll be in the bottom tier does the subway surfers clip increase my watch time i guess we'll find out now this is just my opinion on the teams i have seen play this year and how enjoyable they are nothing more than that there's no conspiracy blues fans now getting us started in the watchability rankings here we start out with the colorado avalanche and as a dallas stars fan i could be biased here and put them in the lowest ranking but really if we're not being biased the abs are must watch TV. You still got Kale McCarr, Nathan McKinnon, Miko Ranton being elite players in their positions. But honestly, Colorado has been a lot less structured this year, which has honestly made them more fun. The goaltending especially has been brutal, but that's made them more fun to watch. Plus you got a lot of new faces, especially on that middle six with players like Ryan Johansson, Miles Wood, Ross Colton, Tomas Tatar that keep this team fresh. And I know I'm a Stars fan placing them in the top tier, but they've been so entertaining that they deserve it. Now, because we have a team in the top tier, it's gonna make this one look a lot worse now we have the new york islanders and i'm sorry to islanders fans but it's not like this ranking is really going to be a surprise to them they know their team is boring already and nobody watches them but dang it they still care and i respect the heck out of that but that respect is not going to go a long way as i have to put subway surfer split screen to be able to pay attention again this will not surprise any islanders fans at all but i feel like the islanders are kind of in that weird position where they're not very good either so it's not like they're winning a ton of games while also being boring but i just had to place them in the lowest tier i i just couldn't not next up we got the montreal canadians and this one is really interesting to me obviously i've really liked watching the habs over the past few years but this year has kind of been in a weird spot i think kirby doc being a loss for the entire season really does hurt this if he was healthy i think the habs would be a lot higher you got really entertaining young players like arbor jack guy obviously but guys like kane and Gooley and alex newhook and i love watching the details and especially kane and Gooley's game that really propel him a long way for me Overall, I'm going to give the Habs the B. Tune in whenever I can. Solid tier for them. Next up, we're going on to another Canadian team in the Calgary Flames. And uh, this one isn't pretty either. It's kind of just been sad to watch just how mediocre, how bad they've been at different stretches of this season. They have some a couple interesting players on the younger side, like Connor Zary and Martin Pospisil, who have been pretty solid this season. But besides that, there really hasn't been much of a reason for me to watch. I'm going to give the Flames a Subway Surfer split screen. Now I'm going on to the New York Rangers, and this one to me is one of the most interesting because the Rangers have been dominant this season. They have been incredible, and I think in some ways they've gotten more entertaining, in some ways they've gotten less. I think in the style of play, they're definitely a lot less entertaining than they have been in years past. But obviously, as you can tell, that's been a great thing for their team. They've gotten a lot more structure, and it's aided in their regular season success. Still, though, I really like watching the little details in their defensive structure and how much that has changed. I'm going to give them a solid tune in whenever I can. Next, I'm going to the Boston Bruins. And I think the only thing keeping them from being more entertaining is just the fact that they're good again and they're dominant again. That's just the most boring thing in the world. Of course they are. Still, though, even with that predictability, they've had some awesome games so far. David Poshnok is still wildly entertaining. That goaltending is still unreal. And you also got a couple of really good young players like Matthew Poitra and Mason Lowry who have been great so far for the Overall, though, I'm going to give them a wildly entertaining grade. I don't think they're up in that top tier, but certainly the Bruins have had a lot of great games so far and keep every game competitive. We've gone through some really high grading teams so far because next up we got the Vancouver Canucks, and I'm not going to wait to spoil this at all because, I mean, to me, there has maybe been no other team that has been as entertaining as this Canucks roster. Quinn Hughes has been unreal. Thatcher Demko has been a true Vesda candidate, if not the number one guy. Elias Pettersson injured has still made some unreal plays this year. JT Miller continuing to be a beast offensively. But you've got so many other interesting players to watch, like Philip Ronick. Nils Hoglander has been great. You've got players like Brock Besser playing to the best of their abilities. 
finally. Next up, we got the Carolina Hurricanes here, and this is a team that has been wild, almost like Colorado because of how poor defensively they have been this year. It's almost added to their entertainment. Carolina has always been pretty entertaining, but this year, I think they've just stepped it up that extra little bit. But you got players like Seth Jarvis, who I absolutely adore watching. You got players like Michael Bunting, who always, always keep games entertaining. Carolina is always going to be in the mix, and I'm going to give them a wildly entertaining grade. Now going on to the Seattle Kraken, and this is definitely one of the teams that I guess has been decreased the most from last year. For Seattle, they might have been must-watch TV for me last season. They were so dynamic, so much depth, and it was so fun to watch. This year, though, even though they have taken a step back, there's still a lot of players I love watching, and with how many blown leads they've had, every game is entertaining. With Seattle, they still have a lot of young players that I do enjoy watching, of course, like Matty Beniers, Jeremy McCann continuing to be a beast, but I think for Seattle, they'll be in the tune-in-whenever-I-can range rather than must-watch TV. Next up, we go into the Tampa Bay Lightning, and this is another team that defensively has just had a rough time this year, especially five on five. But considering the stars they have in Kutra, Point, Stamkos already, they have been so much fun to watch. You had that crazy overtime versus Toronto. You had that insane gong show of a game versus Edmonton recently, that amazing comeback versus Boston. Tampa is always in the mix, always keeping games entertaining. And I'm going to give them right now the top spot and tune in whenever I can. Now we go to the LA Kings, and this is one of those teams that I think is just much watch TV for just how good, how detailed their game has been this year. Of course, I love my boys in Quinton in Byfield, Adrian Kempe, but you still have so many entertaining players outside of that, but their structure and just how good they've been as an overall team is so admirable. I don't think they're taking the top spot or anything, but just how good they've been, how competitive they've been every single game, it's a ton of fun to watch, and I gotta have them in much watch TV. Yes, Byfield definitely helps, but can you blame me? Now we go on to my favorite team in the Dallas Stars. Now, here is the thing. If I'm going biased, obviously it's must-watch TV, number one spot, 100%. How could I not? But if we're going non-biased as possible, I will put the Dallas Stars in the wildly entertaining tier. Still, a lot of players that are fun to watch. Matt Duchesne has been an unreal addition. Wyatt Johnston continues to be great. Jake Ottinger has been a roller coaster this year in the best way. Of course, we were hastening continues to be elite. So many good players here next up let's go on to the minnesota wild i'm not biased when i say this minnesota team has been dreadful to watch in every single way okay maybe not every single way marco rossi brock faber those two legends have really carried them they honestly could be last without them but i'm not going to sugarcoat it with how bad capri Sav has been this year they are in the subway surfer split screen it has been brutal man now let's go to the Nashville Predators and this team, man, even though I've been predicting them to make the playoffs and they're not quite at that level yet, though they will be, trust me, the Preds have made every single game interesting. I mean, that game versus Colorado where they came back with like 15 seconds to go. Come on, man. But Ryan O'Reilly has been unreal. Philip Forsberg has been unreal and healthy this year, most importantly. Love the rookies as well, like Luke Evangelista. And with their goaltending not being as good, of course, that does help the entertainment factor. I think Nashville deserves a pretty high grade. I put them in tune in whenever I can. Now going on the Chicago Blackhawks, and really the only reason why I would watch Chicago is for Connor Bedard, but you still have players like Philip Kurashev, Lucas Reichel, who I do like watching, but besides that, man, it is barren. Though for how much Bedard does raise them quite a bit, I'm going to put them in the enjoyable hockey tier. Now on to the Winnipeg Jets, and this is another team that I think mean, because of the more boring style they have, the more opportunistic style, it has helped them in the win department. And you got players like Connor, Shifley, who have been unreal offensively, and I've loved watching Cole Perfetti this year. That has definitely raised them a bit. But still, I'm not exactly running to watch Winnipeg Jets games. I'm going to put them in the won't be my priority tier. Now we go to the Detroit Red Wings, and this team has been nuts this year. Early on in the season, they might have been must-watch TV, and it's definitely decreased a little bit, but they still got so many young players that are so fun to watch. Dylan Larkin is an absolute mammoth, and he is insane, and I think they deserve to be at the high grade of the wildly entertaining tier. Next up, we got the Florida Panthers, and this one is interesting. Back when they won the President's Trophy, they were probably the most fun team in the league. Last year, they definitely took a step back, even though they would, of course, make the playoffs. In the playoffs, they were really fun to watch. This year, though, in the regular season, they've gone back to must-watch TV for me. Sam Reinhart has been an absolute beast, but it's the offense, it's the high-danger chances they're creating. This is a Florida team that has just been so much fun to watch, and now they've added Eggblad and Montour, and it makes it even more interesting for me. 
I'm gonna put them in must watch TV tier. I think they are so fun to watch, so many high scoring games. Now going on to the Washington Capitals, and this is another team that has turned it around a lot in the watchability for me. Dylan Stroma has decided to become a god all of a sudden. Alex Ovechkin isn't even scoring goals, but he's still been entertaining. That entire forward group has really stepped it up a notch. The defense structure is just insane. It's just high event in every single way, and the goaltending has had to bail them out. Charlie Lindgren has been absolutely unreal. To me, with Washington, they get in the wildly entertaining tier. I'm pretty much watching almost every single game or tuning into at least some of the goals or some of the plays they have been fascinating now let's move on to the new jersey devils and here is the thing because of the jack hughes injury it definitely brings them down a notch if they're healthy i mean they get a lot better and will probably be back in the must watch or wildly entertaining tier as of right now though i'm just going to put them in enjoyable hockey they've been fine a little bit too individual though and it's just kind of been a lackluster team to watch these past few weeks sadly now on to the Oilers, and I genuinely do not know where to place this team. If we're talking about hate watching, I think for a lot of people, they'd be must watch TV, trying to see them lose, trying to watch what they do next, and I could absolutely see that. In terms of the actual team itself, though, they don't place very high for me. Besides tuning to see what next failure they have in front of them, this Oilers team has just kind of been sad to watch. They've been disappointing. They've been frustrating, especially on McDavid's end because he should be much better. I'm going to give the Oilers a b grade next up on to the Ottawa Senators. this is another team that's been frustrating at times especially with the overall game especially early on in the season with some of those weird just rough losses that they found themselves in but i think for ottawa they're in the enjoyable hockey tier i think they headline an enjoyable hockey tier they still got a ton of entertaining players of course like tim Stutzla. shane pinto being out does hurt that quite a bit the sad thing is the dump and chase style is really overly used in dj smith's system and that kind of limits how entertaining they can be for me next up we go into the Toronto Maple Leafs, and hey this team has taken major steps back defensively at times but that's just added to the growth in the watchability for me joseph will has been a ton of fun to watch in the crease for toronto you got players of course still chugging along like austin matthews still scoring a ton of goals for this Leafs team though I think they're a little bit more in the middle of the pack for me but I'm gonna put them just below the lightning in the tune whenever I can next up we go on to Vegas and just like Boston this is a team that would probably be much higher if it wasn't just so expected that they would be so good but there's been some nice storylines William Carlson has been an absolute stud this year and it's so much fun to watch him you got players as well like Logan Thompson playing pretty well that goaltending continue to be one of the best tandems in the league I'm gonna give for Vegas a solid enjoyable hockey grade though they aren't one of the most must-watch teams for me at least. Now we go to the Buffalo Sabres, and this one might be a hot take, because there might not be a team in this league that has dropped off more in watchability for me than Buffalo. You still got players that are really interesting, like Zach Benson, who's come onto the scene, has been an unreal rookie, that first NHL goal, nasty. But Tage Thompson, something was off of him early in the season, and of course he got that injury, which has been really brutal for Buffalo. Jack Quinn has been gone, which has really hurt them as well. And it just feels like players like Owen Power, Rasmus Dahlin, Alex Tuck, they haven't been as dynamic as they were before. And for Buffalo, I put them in the won't be my priority tier. At least right now, while Tage Thompson is injured, I can't have them really any higher. But now we go to a team that has risen above expectations a whole lot is kind of going back down to earth but that hasn't made them less entertaining and that is the anaheim ducks i'm putting them in must watch tv deal with it i mean if we're being honest early on in the season there might not have been a team more entertaining than them they have cooled off a little bit but still got mason mctavish being an absolute goat love watching him. you could just list off the guys troy terry pavel mintyukov you got alex kalorn coming back you got ryan Strom playing at a great rate frank vetrano the italian goat has been unreal next up we got columbus and to me i'm just gonna put them in the won't be my priority tier i do like watching uh players like uh, Voronkov, fantilli Mar uh, marchenko they have been really fun to watch but besides that they just kind of been lackluster bad now going on to the flyers this is again one of those teams that is boring but for the best reasons and it's resulted in a lot of success so far this year for philly though i'm not going to sugarcoat it i'm going to put, uh, put them in the won't be my priority tier but still the physicality has been there the relentlessness on the puck has been there i can see why you could have them higher still though for me the offensive play it's a lot of opportunistic play it isn't about generating the most chances it's about converting on the chances you get for philadelphia they don't they do a great job have played great this year but to me they're on the lesser side now we go into pittsburgh and they've had a kind of weird season to me so far they've had some moments where they've been so much fun to watch and then other times where it's just what the heck is going on here still though i'm going to put them just behind the rangers and just above the canadians of course players like eric carlson Sidney crosby has still been unreal this year they've still got a lot of players that are fun to watch next up going on to the san jose sharks and this one is just kind of sad because they have been just so 
Kind of boringly bad. I do have my favorites. Obviously, William Eklund is still the GOAT, but I can't really sugarcoat anything. This San Jose Sharks to me might be the most boring team in the league with just how consistently bad they've been. There's just not really much reason to watch unless you, it's that, that Edmonton game, which let's be honest, we all watched. Next, we're going on to the Arizona Coyotes. This is a team that has been up and down my watchability this year. There's been times where they've been a little bit frustrating, but sometimes where they have had crazy scoring games that go all over the place, just like that game versus St. Louis. That was an absolute embarrassment, but in the best way. For Arizona, though, they're kind of in the middle of the pack for me, and I'm going to put them in the enjoyable hockey right up below Vegas, but right above Chicago. And now we go to the last team here in the St. Louis Blues, and... Another team, just like Philadelphia, that has found success in the more boring style. But hey, I mean, give them credit. They have been great this year. They got a lot of interesting guys like Jordan Cairo, who I do still enjoy watching when I am able to tune in. But I will give the Blues a grade of won't be my priority. But these are my rankings for every NHL team in the league so far this year. And again, things could definitely change. I could see once the Sabres getting healthy, the Devils getting healthy, them being a lot higher in this list. But as of right now, this is what we're looking at. But I want to know what you guys think of my tier list. What do you guys agree? What do you guys disagree with? And what would your tier list look like? Where would your team go in this tier list as well? I want you to be as non-biased as possible. I try to be as non-biased as possible. So let me know your thoughts down below. Of course, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell if you enjoy this tier list and want to see more just like this in the future. Join the dragging if you guys haven't already. And of course, share the video with all the hockey fans you guys know online to get their watchability out there. And click on this card for all my hockey rings content right in one playlist. My name is Nathan, and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, and goodbye.